gentlemen, my next guest this evening is a Daily Show writer and stand-up comedian making his network television debut. Please welcome Randall Otis. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? Good to see you people. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not from here originally. I'm actually, I'm from Florida, which, I'm sorry. I could hear the judgment in your hearts. Dude, we have the worst reputation out of any state. Like, I meet somebody else from Florida, and we both think less of each other. <laughs> Oh, okay, let, let's not clap too hard for that. <laughs> it just sucks. Like, growing up, I wanted to be from a cooler place. Like, I wanted to be from Atlanta so bad. Atlanta is dope. It's the coolest place I've ever been. It is the blackest place I've ever been. And I've been to Africa three times. <laughs> That's how black Atlanta is. Oh, no, I can't front, though. Like, I'm from a rich suburb in Florida, but my dad is from Compton but he became this really successful businessman, but he still brings Compton energy to non-Compton situations. <laughs> like, I remember one time, me and the rest of the family were just chilling in the living room, and he busted in like, y'all gonna finish this caviar, what? I'm like, all right. <laughs> we live in a gated community, man, relax, you're safe. <laughs> He's absurd. Like, I remember one time, we went to an opera together, Middle of the opera, just leans over to me like, damn, these bitches can sing. I'm like, I'm like how, how did you make it this far? <laughs> like, we're wearing tuxedos, bro. And my mom's the exact same way. My mom grew up real poor. She's doing well now. But it's just hard to shake that mentality, you know? Like, one time, we went to the super fancy restaurant. And then she had this brand new Chanel purse. And as soon as the waiter goes away, she starts stuffing free bread in the purse. <laughs> Just stuffing it. I'm like, mom, we have bread at home. She's like, yeah, because I stole it from the other restaurant. <laughs> They're such dope people, man. They radicalized me when I was real young. Like when I was a kid, they'd read me excerpts from Malcolm X's autobiography before I went to bed. And they had to stop, because I started to beat up the white kids on the playground. <laughs> I was like, you know what you did? <laughs> and they're all liberal kids, too, so they're like, ah, we deserve it, ah! <laughs> uh. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> like, look, I'm liberal, but, dude, liberals are some of the funniest people on earth. Rich liberals are the best, because they're very ashamed of all the money they have, you know? I feel like rich liberals were the ones who created that idea of checking your privilege just to be able to brag openly. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a white, cisgendered, heterosexual male with a lot of family wealth, five cars, private jet, and you know what? That's just something I'm gonna have to learn to live with. <laughs> we all have our struggles in this life, and this is mine. Florida, it's obviously, it was very racist as well. One of the most racist things I ever heard was in Florida, which is a guy who said, this is back in the day, my family would own your family. I was like, honey, you lease a Ford Focus. You could never afford me. <laughs> Ta-ta. <laughs> yeah. But it was funny, before, uh, before I was a comedian, I was actually a dancer for most of my life. And I was always the only straight dancer on every team I was on. And I was never the best dancer, and I felt like it's because I wasn't gay. Which doesn't make sense. <laughs> but I feel that's like how white rappers feel, you know? It's like, look, I am just a guest in this space, okay? <laughs> I know my position. And I would have bullies, too. They're like, what's up with you, man? You gay? I'm like, Psh, I wish. <laughs> Maybe I can nail a pirouette for once. Yeah. I'm real just boring sexually. It makes me artistically insecure. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Because every artist is a freak. Like, James Joyce had fetishes. Mozart had fetishes. If I hear about a guy who likes getting on, I'm like, dude, he can probably paint real good. 
you know? Because, like, I'm just so boring, and it makes me feel like I'll never make anything great. Like, I'll be having missionary sex, and I'll be enjoying it, but there's this voice in the back of my head that's like, this is why you're never going to write a novel. <laughs> there's, just a, there's just a French art critic in my brain, like, uninspired. <laughs> Come back when you're having sex on the moon. Yeah. But in high school, yeah, I was a dancer. I was on the dance team and the football team. So it was like if Spike Lee directed High School Musical, you know? <laughs> and I don't know if there's any theater kids in here, but yeah. They're looking at me like I should be up there. <laughs> All right, then you, you'll know what I'm talking about. I feel like in Hollywood, in movies, we're always portrayed as the victims. But if you know theater kids, they're some of the meanest people you ever meet in your life. <laughs> Seriously, like I remember I would leave football practice to go dance. All the football players would call me gay. I'm like, I am working on it. But then, <laughs> I would leave dance practice to go study my playbook, and all the dancers would be like, oh, what? And you go huddle up with your boys and have sex with each other. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, I thought you all were gay. He's like, we are, but we're also bitches. <laughs> Welcome to high school. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Team.